somebody. My, hey, after an introduction like that, you better preach. So you better help me preach. You know, it's amazing because when you get to do life with people you love, it makes it that much better. There, there's something about being around visionaries, and you have two pastors in your midst, in, in Pastor Andy and Pastor Lisa, that are ex- extraordinary. I, I know you know that, but let me just honor them for my life because my life is always encouraged by them, always inspired them by them, and always pushed to go for a little bit more by them. You know why? Because they're God leaders. They're kingdom leaders. They, they find great recognition and great satisfaction in pushing people beyond. They, 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 they pull back like, an, like a bow to an arrow. They pull people back and launch them. And that's why you're going to see favor and multiplication in this house. That's why you're going to see campuses all over this island. It's why this place cannot stay confound to a, to a building. It's got to go into a world change an atmosphere and increase an understanding of who Jesus Christ is. So can we just honor our pastors? I I know it sounds self-serving, but man, I love you guys so, so, so much. I I was thinking, uh, I appreciate that, Pastor Andy, that I'm the old guy, but um, I I I couldn't help to think when I was sitting there, when I grow up, I want to preach like Oliver. I mean, I'm thinking, Dave, all you have is your iPad. He's got a ladder. I mean, he's got videos. He's got other people helping him. It's like, God, show up. I don't have a ladder. I don't have props. Sorry, it's just me. But but I, I want to believe that God's here in the midst of us. Amen? That, that God is in the midst of us tonight. And it didn't start tonight. I was sitting right there last night when Jason began to preach brilliantly, brilliant, brilliantly to a generation that arose. They didn't just arise, they awakened. There was such the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place, it's like you couldn't leave. You ever been there? It wasn't that anyone was asking you to stay, but you just felt like you might miss something. And I want to remind you tonight that what God wants to do in your life is something for your destiny. That God brought you here tonight to speak into your life. Not from David Swift, but from his Holy Spirit. That God's Spirit is going to speak to you tonight. That what he wants to speak to you is about your grace. It's about your greatness. It's about your possibilities. It's about your future. He's not concerned about where you've been, but I'm telling you he is passionate about where you're going. And there's a theme that I've caught already this evening as Pastor Andy and Pastor Lisa got here and they begin to speak out of, out of, out of the book of Joshua chapter 3 where, where Joshua comes and says, get ready. Can you say get ready? Tell your neighbor, get ready. If you're like T.D. Jakes, you'll say it this way, get ready, get ready, get ready. I wish, just like, come on, white boy, go. Go, white boy, go, white boy, go. But there's something about an expectancy that builds an anticipation that creates a celebration in a house. When you're ready for God, God will blow you away. And I want to say it's amazing because as they said that, then the worship team began to stand and they begin to sing a song, Are You Ready?, And you may be ready, and you may be sitting there and saying, David, I don't know if I'm ready. If you're not ready, then be willing. God doesn't even need you to be ready. He just needs you to be willing because he's able to do immeasurably more than you could think, imagine, or believe that God starts where we end. it's, It's the faith that he's put in us. To see things that we can only imagine, we wonder. But, but, but I would challenge you, even maybe dare you tonight to understand that it's far more important what you see when your eyes are closed than what you see when your eyes are open. Far more important what you see in the faith by the Holy Spirit of what God's going to do with your kids because when you open your eyes, you see the facts of what's happening, but when you 
begin to close and declare, you begin to believe in the truth of what's going to happen. That is, is the faith in our life that builds us. I, I love this scripture in Hebrews that God awakens faith because it pleases him. Our, our awakened faith pleases God. And I find that unique because I can't have faith unless he gives it to me. I, I'm not a Christian because I'm, I'm just a moral person or I'm even a disciplined person or, or I'm kind. Some of you are thinking, yeah, I know some Christians. They're not that kind. I know not in Canada, but I'm from America. They're all mean over there. <laughs> They're mean. And I know people that don't know have Christ that live higher moral standards, but it's not about what I do. It's about what he's done. It's that he's put faith in me to believe that he wants to do more than I could think or imagine. He wants to do immeasurably more than I've ever believed for myself. And it's crazy, at the age of 51, when I look back at my life, at the age of 16, when my youth pastor was saying, you're going to be a youth pastor and you're going to preach. I was like, amen. Yeah, man, I believe it, Mark. God's going to do great things. And then when I walked away, I was like, that guy's crazy. He don't know what he's talking about. I came to church with my mom. I sat with my mom. I'm going to probably leave with my mom. My whole life. This guy's prophesying over me craziness. You know why? Because he had faith I didn't have. He saw some things that I didn't see. But there was a part of me that connected to his faith, connected to what he was saying, began to declare, maybe God is up to something. Maybe he can take an insecure, shy, backwards kid and do something with him. And I'm telling you, God is up to something in your life. He is up to something in your life. He is up to something in your family. And I guarantee he's up to something in this house. That God is wanting to do something. He's wanting to do something. And if you'll just be willing, he's able. <laughs> he, he's able tonight. I, I love it because it says, and without faith it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. I, I don't know why, but I love the word rewards. <laughs> Pastor Andy's been rewarding me with food. It's a love language for me. But, but I love it because what God is saying isn't that I, 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 I want to reward you. He's saying it's my nature. To reward you. It, it's my nature to bless you. It's my nature because I created you with a destiny. And I put everything in your life to fulfill the destiny. And I died on the cross to empower you to be able to pull everything that I needed to do in your life out of your life. So you could, so you could go into the destiny that I have for you. That it's faith. That, that without faith it is impossible. Say impossible. That without faith, so, so I want to have faith. The problem is, is what is my perspective of faith? Because lot, for a lot of us, we read the Bible and we go, well, man, if I have faith, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill giants. I'm going to split seas and I'm going to open up rivers and I'm going to cross in places that are uncrossable. And, and we think of the faith of what has happened instead of declaring possibly of the, what, the faith of what could become. Then I don't know what level of faith you have right now, but I just want to tell you, look at me, it's enough. Jesus doesn't say you have to have great faith. He actually says you just have to have faith the size of mustard seed. I'm just asking for you to believe something and watch me do everything. Just show up, David. Just allow your willingness to hit my ableness, and you'll see the supernatural happen with your life. Come on, somebody. It's not because of who I am. It's because of who he is. It, it's, it's what he's doing. Because faith moves us forward. Faith is not awakening. It, it's not awakened by, by observation. It's awakened by activation. It, it's something that pushes us into the future of our life. And, and if not careful, our faith is what God has done, which is great. 
We quote the scripture, and I love it, that we overcome the adversary by the blood of the Lamb, who Christ is, in the word of our testimony. But, but can I give you maybe a thought that the word of your testimony isn't just what God has done in your life, but something has to awaken in your spirit of what God is going to do in your life. So I can testify what God's done, but I've got to have a declaration of what God's going to do. That my declaration is moving me into the faith of what God has for my life. That I've got to begin to speak it. I just can't see it, but i got to speak it if I'm going to seize it. That I begin to declare what's going to happen instead of what's happening. See, faith is a response. It, it starts with a thought, but it moves into an action. That's, got, that's why God says without works, faith is dead. Without an action, it's just as a thought. It's a good idea. And if not careful, I can be satisfied with an idea of who God is instead of an action of what God wants. I, I can become satisfied with the stories of what God has done instead of passionate about declaring what God is going to do. You know why it is so easy to talk about what God has done? Because you're right every time. Now some of you might be indulging what God has done, but it's okay, we love you. It is, it is talking about what's happened. But you know what? Jesus came in faith. He began to declare about what was going to happen. No, Peter, I know you're bipolar. I know you're a little messed up. Think about Jesus' disciples. You want to talk about faith? Jesus had more faith than anybody. And he's got Peter. He's got a swearing problem. Like some of you. Not the person sitting next to you. Someone else. And, and I, I'm being facetious, but yet I'm not. And when I look at the team that Jesus had... He wasn't talking about where they'd come from. He wasn't talking about what their problems was. He was speaking about who God was and what God was going to do and where God was going to take them and that they were going to do greater things that he had done and they were going to go to greater places than he had done, gone and, and they were going to see God move in ways that they had never seen him move. He was declaring what was coming. He wasn't telling them where they had been. That's what I love about God. Is God lives in my today, but he also lives in my tomorrow. The problem is, is I live, if not careful, with the thoughts of where I've been instead of the thoughts of where I'm going. And so they trap my now so that I don't believe in my next. And faith is something that rises up within you today to say, no, God has more. There's an awakening in my life. That, that God is after something, wants to do something, is pouring out something, is building something in my life, in my family, in my mind, in my heart, in my body, to do something exceptional. Because it is my belief that awakening faith starts with a declaration of what God can do. You ever been around someone super positive? I love being around positive people. You know, because you know what? I, I'm every once around around someone that says it this way. I, I don't know if you understand this here because I know you guys are way nicer. But people that like, well, I'm just honest. I'm just keeping it real. I'm like, no, you're negative. <laughs> you ain't keeping it real. You're just thinking about starting a diet tomorrow. Hmm, good luck with that. Just keeping it real. Like, well, I don't need your real in my life anymore. I, I want to I want to have an understanding that 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 what I'm declaring is by faith that I'm going somewhere that my kids are going somewhere I don't want to get caught in facts I want to get caught in truth facts will tell you well you're sick that's a fact but truth will tell you he's my healer facts will tell you I don't have enough in my bank account, but truth will tell you that he's my provider. Facts will tell you that it didn't work out like you thought it was going to work out, but truth 
says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he got you through that, he'll get you through this. That, that, that I've got to set my mind on a truth of who he is. Not on the facts of what I've been or haven't been. Not on the facts of where my life is today. But what did Christ say about my life? That I'm an overcomer. That I'm a conqueror. That I'm a new creation. I'm not a, I, I'm not a almost new. I'm a new creation. And that he wants to work in my life. That he is my strength. He is my shield. He is my strong tower. And when I run to him, I find strength. See, it's truth that I want to operate in. I love it because there's an individual that begins to declare truth in Matthew chapter 8, verse 9. It's an individual that comes to Jesus. And he has a sick servant. And he comes to Jesus and asks Jesus if he would heal his servant. And here it is in verse 9. He says, For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I tell this one, go. And he goes. And that one, come. And he comes. And I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. Man, I wish my kids were like this guy. Can I get a witness? <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, and, and then he says, and when Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Well, what he was saying is, if you say who you say you are, then you can speak healing. You, you don't just speak healing, you are healing. You're not a forgiver, you're forgiveness. You're not loving, you are love. And Jesus says, what you declared, I'm going to answer. Because I'm going to match your faith with my reaction. Sometimes I think we miss God out of our insecurity, not out of our, our ability. That, that we miss God because we keep telling God who we are <laughs> instead of telling God who he is. That I have to be careful that my faith isn't trying to answer. My, my faith, I, I want to say this right, but my faith isn't something I'm declaring to make my problem smaller. Sometimes that's what we do, that our prayer is to make the conditions of our life less or smaller or easier to navigate. But maybe my faith should rise up that it would, instead of decreasing the size of my problems, increase the faith of my life that, that increases the capacity of my life. That maybe why God has let things in my life happen isn't to make me feel small, but so that he could become great. That I'm not asking God to downsize my life, but I'm asking by faith that he would allow the capacity of my life to enlarge. That I would awaken to all that he has for my life. That what he has is, is significant, that I will start declaring. I was at a gas station several years ago, and I was driving to an outreach. Young in my life, I used to do in... And Pastor Andy will relate with this, but we were a part of a program or a Bible school somewhat called Master's Commission. And we did outreach, and I had already gone, and I was youth pastoring, but they were doing an outreach in Phoenix, so I drove to Phoenix, and I was excited. And I was just filling my gas tank up at the gas pump. When this guy gets out of his truck, and he has like a pillow wrapped around his hand. I mean, it is like a pillow. And he's got it up like this. He gets out of his truck literally and walks over to the gas pump. And me, because I'm polite and nice and considerate, I just said, oh, my gosh. What would you do to your hand? And what I didn't realize is he was bilingual. He spoke swearing and English proficiently. And so our conversation went like this. He's like, you're not going to believe it. And he put his pillow down. He said, I had a skill saw, and I was ripping wood, and I poop, poop, over my poop, poop, with a poop, poop. You ever met someone, they can only use like two English words to a whole sentence, but it's like, I don't agree with you, but that was impressive. <laughs> and so I was interpreting. And basically what he said in regular English is, I cut my hand off. 
And so I'm filling up gas. I'm not thinking anything. And God says, I want you to pray for him. And I said, I'm going to do an outreach, God. I ain't got time. <laughs> no, I'm being dead serious. I'm like, God, I'm like, I'm on a, you know, this guy cut his hand off. It's probably his fault. God, we know, we both know already. I've only met this guy 10 seconds. You've known him his whole life. He's crazy. And so I said to him, I said, hey, man, I don't know if this is possible. I know we're at a Circle K gas station, but could I pray for your hand? And he said, serious? Yeah, pray for it, man. You think God could heal it? Now, what happened was, when he said it, I, I'm like, yeah, God could heal it. But I felt a little convicted because I was just gassing up my car saying, I don't want to pray for this guy. I was telling God the conditions, right? Like, God, you don't get it. This guy, he doesn't want me to pray for him. He's, a, he's been swearing like no other. He, he's not looking for prayer. I'm glad God's God and he's not me. And so I said, listen, man, I believe God can heal you today. I believe God's going to restore your hand. You know, it's amazing how faith rises up when you just get obedient. When you just take one step, God will give you another step. I, I mean, it's amazing that, that, that you, don't, you don't run without first taking a step. I mean, you've got to start moving before you start sprinting. And all of a sudden, man, I'm there like this. I'm praying for my, my man's hand. I mean, it's wrapped in a pillow. He's like, 50%, that's all they're giving me. I said, man, with God, it's 100%. And you're like, well, did he get healed? I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't my job. It was God's job. I didn't follow him home like, hey, can I walk through physical therapy? I went to the outreach. He got back in his truck. I waved at him. He, I don't know if he was waving at me or his hand was just stuck up. I, I was like, all right, I'm out. And here's the thing is, is, is God isn't after. I'm not a healer. I just am obedient. Because for my life, it wasn't the amount of if God healed him or not. Is was I, was I willing to believe God could heal him? <laughs> and it's crazy the stuff that goes on in your head. Like, Dave, you ask this guy, you know what's amazing? Is he literally was actually proficient in English. After I prayed for him, not one swear word. Why? Because he was at a place that he couldn't answer what was happening in his life. But there's a God that can answer. There's a God that can move. There's a God that can use us. Just some 20-year-old kid pumping gas into his car thinking, God, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just going to pray for this guy at Circle K. With, with not even that much faith because he had, his eye, he had more faith than I had. I mean, his eyes were closed. He was like this, like, pray, brother, pray. I was like, do I know anybody here? Jesus, if you're real, heal him. He's crazy. Help him emotionally, physically. But it's that response. Listen, when you begin to respond, it gets easier. It gets easier. I was talking to a guy in the store today. His name was Noel. And I said, no, you should come to church tonight with me. He was like. He literally looked at me like, you're crazy. And then Pastor Andy, I'm like, I want you to meet my friend. He goes to the church too. I didn't want to tell him he was a pastor because Noel would have literally ran out of the building. It's just, let's do life with faith, believing that what God can do is immeasurably more. Not just for my life, but for your life, for their life, for the world's life. That he is up to something great and I'm his messenger. Come on, I'm his messenger. It's what he does. It's amazing because I'll close with this story that God awakens faith. He awakened faith in the natural so that he could do the supernatural. That's who God is. He's not asking me to do anything supernatural. He's just asking me to be David, the man that he called. The dad, the husband, just the guy. He's just asking me to step in faith and believe that 
who he has been in my life wasn't just to get me here, but it was to get me there. That there's something more, that there's something more. And I don't want to live in what was, I want to live in where I'm, I'm going. And, and so there, there's in this story in 2 Kings chapter 7, I'll, I'll, I'll just paraphrase it for you because of time. But, but, but there's these four lepers. And, and they're, they're there with Israel and, and the uh, Arameans are, are there in, in kind of on the outskirts and they're doing well. And so the, these four lepers literally are there and they're dying on the steps of the gate. They're hanging out. And, and what, I, what, what I find amazing, if you don't let God heal you, you'll, you'll make a colony of whatever's hurt you. You'll find someone to tell you it's okay to be hurt because I'm hurt. It's okay to be broken because I'm a broken. It's okay to be addicted because I'm addicted. It, it, it's okay to live good instead of great because I'm living good. You, you'll find it, but I, I, I find it amazing when you begin to step in faith in the presence and the power of God, then that all changes. You'll begin to believe for things that you never could believe for. You'll begin to see things that you never saw. You'll begin to hear things that you never heard. And so they're, they're, they're one day, and, and I like it because it says this. It, this is this guy, and he says, If we say we go into the city, the famine is there, and we will die. And if we stay here, we will die. So let's go over to the camp of the Arameans and surrender, and if they spare us, we will live. And then he says, And if they kill us, we will die. And when I was reading this, not to be so simple, but I thought, you know, there's going to be a day that I die. It's inevitable. <laughs> it's going to happen. But I'm going to die. I just want to make sure I live. I, I want to make sure that I don't get caught at a place of transition, but I make it home. Because they were at a gate, and it's, it's amazing to me because at this gate is where they live. And, and I get it because people came in and came out. But, but, but if not careful, you'll get caught at the place of transition of pain, the place of transition of difficulty, the place of transition of divorce. I know people that 20 years ago something happened, they're still living there. That voice wakes them up every morning and puts them to bed every night. That their declaration is still what has happened to them instead of what is going to happen to them. It is talking about what's been instead of what could be, what might be, what God is up to. That God is up to great things in my life. That God is awakening me. But in faith, God began to speak to these men. Because what happened is it wasn't just their lives they changed. It was everybody's lives that got changed. And, and I want to challenge you tonight to think about something. To process something in your life. Is, is there a place in your life that is holding your mind captive from believing God of what he can't do instead of what he can do? Is there a moment that God didn't show up? I, I love talking about the places that... God showed up. But you know what the greatest faith sometimes? It's believing God when he didn't seem like he did show up. When he didn't answer the prayer. And, and, and when I was thinking about these four men, they still have leprosy. They're still on the outskirts. On the outskirts. But they're going somewhere. They, they said to themselves, I am not going to die where I'm at. By faith, I'm going to step in a direction of possibility. By faith tonight, I'm going to move my life in faith, in the spirit to say, no, this is what I'm believing for. God is awakening something in me. There's something more to life than this that I have more to live for, to believe for. That there's a faith in me that's unshakable. Will, will you stand with me this evening? If not careful, you'll get stuck in your pain instead of your promise. If not careful, we will 
we, we will stay in our struggle instead of stepping towards his strength. Or we'll stay in our brokenness instead of stepping towards his restoration. Then we begin to declare who he is by faith. Not by where we are, but where he is. And my faith, if not careful, is, is taught to me that by my faith I'm going to get to heaven. When, when, when I get it, that's true. We are going to heaven, but God doesn't just put the faith in your life to get to heaven. No, he put faith in your life to get heaven to you. That what is bound in heaven will be bound on earth. What is loosed in heaven will be loosed on earth. That, that heaven is trying to get to you. It's faith that accesses the supernatural. It's faith that accesses breakthrough. It's faith in your life. Just a little bit of faith. Some of you tonight, you have faith. For, for God to do incredible things with your business. Some of you in this place, you have faith for God to use your children in supernatural ways. Some of you have faith in what God is doing in your life right now. And some of you, you just had enough faith to get here. But you're not going to leave here with just enough faith tonight. You're not going to leave here with just enough. No, you're more than enough. He's more than enough. He's able to do all. Not some. He's an all-doing God. He's an all-powerful God. And he's a God that works miracles. He's a God that awakens churches for revival. He awakens a generation for an assignment. He awakens a mom to do the impossible. He awakens a dad to begin to declare over his family. It is a God that awakens the spirit of us. There was a moment in my life that God awakened the call of God and I couldn't shake it. Didn't even know if I wanted it. <laughs> Why? Because it was bigger than me. And what I've come to realize is God doesn't start where I am. God starts at the end of where I am. God meets me at the end of me so that he can do what only he can do. And God's here for you tonight, no matter what you're navigating, no matter what you're pushing through. That tonight, will you just close your eyes and dream for a second? Will you close your eyes and not see the pain, but see the promise? Will you close your eyes and see the, the, the love and not the hate, see the the the, the the newness instead of the old, that see the possibility tonight, tonight's your night, that your next is now, it's not next week, it's not when you get better, it's not when you get it all together, it's not when the church grows or someone helps you, no, no, it's right now, it's right now, church, it's right now, and it takes a level of faith to say, no, tonight I'm stepping away from where I've been and I'm stepping into a new season by faith that when I walk out these doors, the circumstances, situations, and struggles are still there, but I'm not walking out like I walked in. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not stepping out these doors like I stepped in these doors. God is greater. My eyes are focused. My strength is stronger, and my faith is bigger. My belief is connected to the author and the perfecter of my faith who set within me the ability to shake off everything that entangles me and, and break off everything that wants to hold me and run, run, run a race of what he's called me to run. And, and I want to do something tonight. I know time is time, but I want to do something. I'm, I'm going to ask you by faith to move quick. It's not a night to beg. It's not a night, hey, could you, would you? I'm just saying, if you're living with less, but you know there's more, you know there's more. You know there's more in you. You know there's more in God. You know there's more in ministry. You know there's more in business. You know there's more in your kids. And you're believing by faith. No, no, David, I'm going to say I'm willing, and I'm going to step into his ableness. If that's you tonight, would you do me a favor? Would you just step out from wherever you are? And just come to this altar just right now, just without even thinking. There's more. There, there's more for you. 